Welcome back to video two. Today we're going to be talking about the social contract, which we learned about in the last video, and also the perspectives of two Enlightenment era philosophers on the nature of government and what it's supposed to do for us. Okay, so just to recap, the social contract is this idea that the people give up some of their rights or their freedoms in order to receive government protection. Okay, so two different people are talking about the nature of government and the social contract. The first guy that we want to look at is John Locke. Now, John Locke uh, was writing in the 1600s, and he's written, he wrote a couple of books, um, and he's just trying to explain what government should be to the people and what people should be to the government, okay? So John Locke believed that everybody, no matter who you are, where you live, everyone is born with three natural rights, okay? Okay. And they're going to sound kind of familiar to something else that you've heard of before, I bet. So John Locke believed that everybody is born to the right, with the right to life, liberty, and property. Okay? Right to life, liberty, and property. Those are the three natural rights. Okay? So when John Locke is talking about natural rights, he says that these are things that you're born with. You don't have to do anything for them. Okay? So keep that in mind about John Locke. Now, According to John Locke, people created government. They created the social contract, that agreement between the people and the government to protect their natural rights, okay? Because John Locke believed that the government was created or government in general was created to protect your natural rights. And if your rights weren't protected, then they were gonna be constantly in jeopardy of being lost, okay? So Thomas Hobbes, has a similar idea, like he recognizes that people are born with rights um, and that we need a government in order to help us protect those rights. But Thomas Hobbes has kind of a different train of thought when it comes to that. So Hobbes says that without government, we would be in what he called a state of nature. Okay, so a state of nature where no government exists. There's no government, there's no governing concept, no idea that anybody's in control of you. OK, so he said in that kind of situation, life is going to be three things. It's going to be nasty. It's going to be brutish and it's going to be short. OK, because the only person who is able to protect your rights is you. And they're going to be constantly in jeopardy of being um, of being taken. Thomas Hobbes also believes that the best type of government, the only type of government that people can have is an absolute government. OK, so he is going to believe that government is uh, is absolute, that there's never a time when you can like overthrow your government and start again. OK, so jumping back up here to John Locke, John Locke believed that people could break the social contract so they could overthrow their government and instate a new one if the government stopped working for the people. So if the government all of a sudden started turning on us, um, then John Locke would think, okay, that government is no longer serving its purpose, so what do we have to do? We have to overthrow it and start a new one, okay? Thomas Hobbes believed that any government is better than no government at all, okay? So the most ruthless dictator, the most terrible, horrible, corrupt government that you can think of, Hobbes would say, you know what? You're stuck with it because you have to have a government. There's never any time where people cannot have a government or a governing body. Okay, so make sure you got all that down in your notes. If you have any questions, let me know.